Welcome back, Canaanites. You know, for as much media and formats as Halo has expanded into, there's always room for further growth. For the longest time, I've had a list of ideas of what Halo could be made into next. As you may have seen earlier this week, 343 Industries is partnering with the aptly named Spartan Games to make a tabletop game where players control various fleets from within the canon and duke it out in old school fashion. While this isn't the first Halo tabletop game, that title belonging to Halo Action Clicks from 2007, it's a place I've wanted to see Halo return to and ship battles are probably the best way Halo could do it. This week's cannon fodder gives us a closer look at what to expect from this new miniatures game, along with some canonical context surrounding the figures, the fleet, and the game itself. So without further ado, let's dive in. To start, I just wanted to quickly point out this week's cannon fodder, In the Loop, a reference to the Keys Loop, a brilliant piece of military strategy devised by the legendary Captain Jacob Keys in Halo The Fall of Reach during the Battle of Sigma Octanus IV, and a very appropriate title for the subject at hand. Going into the article itself, we get a little background on how the game stands in relation to the canon. The short answer is, the fleets, ship designs, and descriptions are all canon. 343 worked very closely with the Spartan Games teams not only to accurately recreate the look of existing ships, but to design the look of two brand new ships. But the game goes deeper than just new designs. While details on how the game plays are yet to be revealed, we do get a bit of insight. Based on the article, it can be deduced that the game is designed to, as accurately as possible, replicate the details of a Halo Universe ship-to-ship -ship battle. To quote the article, The scenarios and vessels are fully vetted by 343 Industries and the Halo franchise team. Spartan Games is both visualizing previously unrealized designs and revealing details about Halo space combat known only by a handful of writers. The descriptive texts and technical details will also be canon, and we are excited to have this opportunity to reveal them in proper context. But perhaps even more exciting are the possible scenarios that will become available as the game continues to grow. Examples include commanding Sangheili forces during the Great Schism, or seeing how Infinity could have changed the tides of battle during the Fall of Reach. The second one is one I would personally love exploring as soon as possible. Hell, when this game gets big enough, I'd love to go as far as even recreating the whole battle of Reach. But that's a dream for tomorrow. Now, let's take a look at the two fleets that will be launching this new miniatures game and some of the details surrounding the new ships. First up, we have the fleet of Valiant Prudence. Canonically, this is the fleet players discover at the end of the Halo Reach level, Nightfall, and engage in the following level, Long Night of Solace. The miniature fleet includes six SDV-class heavy corvettes, one CCS-class battlecruiser, and for the first time seen in the fiction, the ORS-class heavy cruiser. Sadly, the set does lack the flagship Long Night of Solace, but the article does mention that 343 and Spartan Games do plan to release this monstrous ship for the future. For now, let's focus on what we do have. The new ORS-class heavy cruiser is a 3,000-meter-long beast of a warship that also boasts stealth capabilities. The Waypoint article notes that this ship, quote, isn't exactly the type of thing that any UNSC captain wants to see appear on their view screen. Before moving forward, let's take a brief look at the scale of these figures. The ORS class is 3,000 meters long canonically and about 15 centimeters long in this miniatures game. Taking a second to swing back to the Long Night of Solace, if 343 and Spartan Games were planning to make everything to scale, the Long Night of Solace would be close to 1.5 meters. For scale, the average adult male is about 1.7 to 1.8 meters tall. I'm almost certain they're going to scale things down both for the sake of their artists and the sake of our wallets, but the bigger ships like the Long Night of Solace would still be massive. Just to note 343, I will happily sell an arm and a leg for a full-scale model of those ships. Just saying. Moving forward, the other fleet in the first wave of sets is the battle group Leviathan. If you've read Halo The Fall of Reach, the name should sound very familiar. In July of 2552, Battlegroup Leviathan participated in the Battle of Sigma Octanus IV and helped score one of the few true victories against the Covenant. By the way, this is the same battle during which Captain Keys created his Keys Loop Battle Maneuver for which the article was named. Canonically, the fleet is commanded from the UNSC Leviathan, a Marathon-class heavy cruiser, by Vice Admiral Hieronymus Michael Stanford. That's a name that longtime lore fans should immediately recognize, and if you're unfamiliar with him, look him up on Halopedia. Now, much like the previous Covenant fleet set, this UNSC battlegroup is not a full representation of Battlegroup Leviathan, but it does include 12 Paris-class heavy frigates, two Marathon-class heavy cruisers, and the brand new Epoch-class heavy cruiser. 
The epoch is based on concept art from Halo 2, Halo Wars, and Halo 4, and borrows aspects from 343's newer ship designs, along with some aspects of the Spirit of Fire and more classic Bungie-era designs. In short, this ship is the ultimate merging of three studios' ship designing capabilities. Overall, I'm really excited to get my hands on this game when it comes out and see what sort of new canon tidbits will be released alongside it. More so, I can't wait to share these details with you guys, along with maybe some video of the game in action. The article wraps up by announcing that next week's Cannon Fodder will feature a Q&A session. If you want to get your questions answered, head over to Halo Waypoint and post. Please note you only get one post and three questions within that post. Choose wisely. Link in the description. As always, we end this episode with a look at the new articles in the Halo Universe section. This week, we got an update to the entry on the Corbulo Academy of Military Science, or CAMS, and new entries for the new Mombasa Superintendent, Spartan Kelly 087, and the Type 32 Rapid Attack Vehicle, or Ghost. There is no shortage of awesome this week, so let's dive in. The updates to the CAMS article are entries on two of the staffers at the school, General Daniel Black and Colonel Kennedy Lynn Mahaffey. Black was part of the Marine Corps and participated in Operation Tribuchet, and, at the time, ongoing offensive against the insurrectionists. Fun fact, everyone's favorite cigar-chomping Marine also participated in Tribuchet. While unlikely given the scope of Trebuchet, it is possible that, at some point, General Black and Sergeant Johnson fought alongside each other. Anywho, Black was a die-hard UNSC-slash-UEG loyalist, and seeing so many youths defecting to the insurrection led him to take in the position of superintendent at CAMS. There, he hoped to instill pro-UEG education into the developing minds of the students. Colonel Mahaffey has her own interesting backstory. She was born on the outer colony of Desdoron. During her first deployment as an ODST, she was placed in a squad with then First Lieutenant Audrey Lasky, mother of Thomas and Cadman Lasky. The two rose through the ranks together, and both earned reputations within their ranks. Lasky for her encyclopedic knowledge, Mahaffey for her penchant for engaging in close quarters combat, usually with a knife. I already liked Mahaffey's character despite her brief tenure in Forward Under Dawn, but I love me them knife wielders. When she was transferred to CAMS, it was said that she was transferred without a scratch, leading to years of speculation among the students as to the origin of her scar, though no official origin was ever discovered. For almost 10 years, Mahaffey was instrumental in turning out some of the best and brightest in the UNSC. Sadly, both Colonel Mahaffey and General Black were killed during the Covenant invasion of Circinius IV on April 26, 2526. Next up is the Superintendent article. While most of it is repeated information from Halo 3 ODST, the article does name, for the first time, the ODST squad led by Gunnery Sergeant Edward Buck during the events of the aforementioned game, Alpha 9. Next is Kelly 087, or Kelly Shaddock, as she was born. This is an entry I've been waiting for for a while now. While much of the information is repeated from existing sources, we do learn some new tidbits, such as her last name, her homeworld, a colony called Ember, her birth date, June 21st, 2511, and so much more. It's an exciting article that needs to be read firsthand rather than relayed. Finally, we have the ghost. Not much to talk about, but it does briefly address a major design flaw, the open cockpit. Oni notes that it seems to be a quirk of Sangheili's psychology. Apparently, it's a quirk shared among humans. I'm looking at you, Warthog. Anyway, that's all for today. As always, please check out the Cannon Fodder and Waypoint Universe articles for yourself. There's a lot of smaller details that I leave out in these summaries because there's often too much to just sum up in a video. This week, for example, there are interviews that really give an in-depth look at the design processes for the ship miniatures. Plus, I want you guys to show some love for Mr. Jeff Easterling himself, the author of these blog posts. Read the articles and show 343 how much we love them. That's the best way to make sure they keep happening. One last thing before we go, if you haven't seen this week's Halo Bulletin, check it out. Jeff Easterling makes an appearance and answers a couple small questions about the lore. It's awesome to see the lore side getting addressed in the Bulletin, and Mr. Easterling ends his segment with a quick question for the lore fans. Are you savvy enough to answer? I mean, without looking it up on Halopedia. That's all for now. Links to all articles, plus this week's Bulletin, will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means more than I could express in a few minutes of audio. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it around on whatever social media you see fit and all that jazz. Thank you so much. Your support is everything. I would not be where I am without you. Thanks.